Dear viewers, Assalamu alaikum. This is our second video on organic spectroscopy. So today we will discuss different aspects of UV visible spectroscopy. So first we should know what is the different type of electronic transitions in during UV visible spectroscopy. Let's suppose we have different bonding, non-bonding and anti-bonding molecular orbitals and here we have represented the energy level of these orbitals sigma and pi bond are the molecular orbitals n is the non-bonding and pi star and sigma star is representing anti-bonding molecular orbitals if we look at the electronic transition or excitation we can observe the sigma to sigma excitation in case of saturated hydrocarbons are organic compound where there is only sigma bond like here we have given an example of ethane similarly if we have non-burning electrons in in the molecule like here we have hydroxyl group and oxygen has non-burning electrons in this case non-burning electrons can be excited to the sigma star these type of electronic transitions or excitations require high energy radiations and uh, the region in the region where these excitation falls are vacuum uv region like 50 to 200 uh, nanometer wavelength in case of pi to pi star or n to pi star electronic transitions we have unsaturated system like here or conjugation like here we have ethylene in which there are double bond or pi bond so in this case the excitation will be from pi to pi star and in case where we have non-bonding electrons and also the unsaturated system or pi electrons then the excitation may be from n to pi star and these are the different type of functional groups that require uv or visible wavelength of light so these are the electronic transitions which may occur if we look at the terminologies about absorption position and intensity we should know that the absorption position is the lambda max at or what we can say that it is the absorption occur due to a specific functional group so it is the position where we obtain the peak in, in, a, in the graph and intensity depends on the number of molecules that specific type of functional groups are the molecules so it depends on how much that specific group is present or the number of molecules present so if we look at the graph we can observe here that this is the absorption increasing and here is the lambda in, uh, wavelength so on x-axis wavelength is shown whereas on y-axis there is absorption and uh, if you look at the peak the position of the peak is represented with the lambda, lambda max whereas the the height of this peak represents intensity so it matches with the intensity so this is our position which is lambda max and here is the intensity of the absorption that how much these molecules are present We can also take an example of electronic transition or excitation by considering an example of the orbitals and the shape of the orbitals. Like here we have shown the shape of orbitals in carbonyl system. So these are the bonding molecular orbitals which are pi bonding molecular orbitals and these are the anti-bonding these are the anti-bonding molecular orbitals. So here carb carbonyl group contains two pi electrons and the oxygen contains two pair of non-burning electrons if the excitation occurs from pi to pi transition pi star then in this case the electron will be excited from pi electron to pi star which is the anti-burning molecular orbital and if the transition occurs from non-burning to pi star then the electron will shift from non-burning electron to 
pi star which is the anti bonding molecular orbital so in this way we can represent the excitation by considering the shape of the molecules the next uh, we should uh, observe that uh, what will be the effect of solvent on electronic transition and it is commonly observed in polar molecules which when when they are dissolved in the polar solvents like here if we look at the example of acetone and ethanol so these are the different type of transition which may occur in acetone like pi to pi star or n to pi star transitions and if this solvent polarity is increased like here the if the acetone is dissolved in water so in this case the difference between energy level of the pi to pi star is decreased so in this case it means we have difference in energy level is decreased and then it absorbs the energy uh, the light which is of longer wavelength but in case of non burning to pi star the energy difference increases and it represents that the wavelength which is absorbed by the by this excitation will be of shorter wavelength because why this this occurs that n that, that n is lower down that it 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 energy level decreases because of stability of the these non bonding electrons because of the hydrogen bonding or electrostatic inter interaction with the polar solvent so if there is polar solvent then there may be the intermolecular forces like hydrogen bond or electrostatic interaction with polar solvent which becomes due to which it becomes more stabilized and thus it requires high higher energy or shorter wavelength of light beer lambert's law it it is a uh, this law is important or it is a combined form of beer's law and lambert's law and uh, the, uh, through which we can observe we can uh, we through which we can measure the absorbance of the different sub substances so if we look at the transmitters transmitters is the intensity of the light which is transmitted divided by intensity of the light which is uh, which is incident light so here is the incident light and here we have transmitted light so transmitters is i transmitted light divided by the incident light whereas absorption is the inverse of transmitters so it is the log of one of transmit one by transmitters or it may be log i not divided by I. If we look at the absorption through Beer Lambert law, it is A is equal to E C L, where E is the molar absorptivity, C is the concentration of the sample, and L is the path length of the sample. Here we have represented that uh, if we look at the transmitters, the curve will be like this by increasing the concentration and if we are going to increase the concentration with absorption it will be a straight line and uh, we can explain this mechanism this beer lambert law by taking this instrumentation like we here there are two types of uv visible spectrophotometers like single beam and double beam and here we are going to represent double beam spectrophotometer scheme so double beam spectrophotometer consist of a source where incident light i naught falls on monochromator monochromator converts this light to a single wavelength of light and this wavelength of light when passes through beam splitter it is converted into two beams of light one passes from the reference and other passes from the sample in case of single beam there is only single wavelength of light which passes first we uh, take reference sample reference and then we take sample so in this case this reference neglects the whole absorption and it is the same incident light which the detector detects and here we have the transmitted light which is represented with i so in this case we can show we can show that the transmitters is uh, transmitted light divided by the incident light after 
detector it is amplified and then recorder takes the recording in the form of spectra different uh, inst uh, instrumentation contain different compartments like light source light source are uh, of different types for visible region we use tungsten filament for uv region we use, we use hydrogen discharge lamp deuterium or mercury lamp monochromator is prism or diffraction grating which contains entrance and exit slit mirrors and lenses through which a, 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 a beam of light with different wavelengths of light is converted into a single wavelength of light and then passed on to the sample sample cell for visible we use glass cubit and for uv region we use quartz cubit so because glass absorbs uv light so therefore we use quartz cubit for as a sample sample cell detector is the photomultiplier tube uh, it causes it is uh, it, it takes the sample it takes the uh, light uh, coming from the sample on photocathode here we are going to represent photomultiplier tube the light light is spotted on photocathode photocell photocathode which emits electron and these electrons when fall on dynodes they are multiplied and then other dynode which is more positive than this one and in this way these dynodes are these electron passes from one dynode to other and in this way electrons are ejected more and more and multiplied finally these electrons are accepted at anode and anode from anode these electrons are passes in the form of current and then these are detected so in this way the signal coming in the form of light are converted into current and this this current is detected and then we can uh, interpret our results here we have shown the example of monochromator like here light enters and then passes through different mirrors or and then prism separates this light and a single wavelength of light is then passes from the exit slit and then we can detect it okay so today it's uh, about uv visible spectroscopy and uh, we are going to continue in our next lecture that what kind of different chromophores or axochromes are present and how they provide different signals and then woodward rules <laughs>